So despite everything you've heard from those clickbaity science videos with the obviously big Photoshop Great White, um, yeah, not just anything could exist in the depths of the ocean. Although we haven't mapped a huge chunk of the ocean. Pretty much every scientist can tell you uh, Megalodon is not under there. Um, but what is Megalodon and why are we so sure? Despite what you may think, Megalodon didn't live in the dinosaur times. Instead, it lived pretty recently, from the Miocene all the way down to the Pliocene. So uh, pretty recently is geological time. Uh, that was like 23 to 3 million years ago. So um, Megalodon also had some pretty stiff competition back in the day. One of the most noticeable was the sperm whale with teeth the size of artillery shells, Livitian. Very cool. One of my favorite whales. Uh, but enough about how it lived. How are we sure that it's dead? Well, for starters, Megalodon was a coastal hunter that hunted whales. Um, although it's true that a good chunk of the ocean is uncharted, the part where Megalodon lived is the part that we 100% have charted. We would have just seen it by now because we really like coasts. And if we would have seen it back then, whale watchers today definitely would. Uh, speaking of which, nobody brings up the fact that our relationship with whales would almost 100% push it to extinction. You see, back when we were sailing during the great whale hunts, we could strip a whale carcass to bones in hours like a big meaty conveyor belt because we really like those oil for lamps and also whale vomit for perfumes. If Megalodon really did exist, we'd for sure see the main predator of a lot of these whales during these hunts. Not to mention, uh, yeah, pushing a good chunk of whales too close to extinction would probably put its main predator to extinction too. What about the Marinus Trench? Could it live there? Uh, no, 100% not. There is not a lot of coastal whales down in that trench. Or a lot of food that could realistically support a population of giant whale-eating sharks. And I may see, but Ginkgo lives down there, and it's obviously adapted to deep sea living, and I'd say sure, but uh, that's not Megalodon then, because due to the rules of evolution, it's not, because it's adapted to a totally different lifestyle and probably genetically very different from where it was 3 million years ago, so it would be an entirely different species. So yeah, 100% Megalodon went extinct about 3 million years ago. Um, what reasons did it go extinct? We're not entirely sure. Some theories think climate change. Uh, whales like to live up north, and when the north got a lot colder, sharks couldn't just follow it up there because they freeze and die. Um, also, it could have been competition. As we said, Livitan, giant sperm whale with giant teeth, would have probably pushed that out of its niche really quickly. Whatever the case, though, we're sure it's dead. The well, Makili Mbembe is a supposed surviving sauropod dinosaur, which, and I cannot stress this enough, does not exist. First, let's get into the facts. Non-avian dinosaurs went extinct around 65 million years ago. There's no evidence to suggest anything outside of our feathery friends survived after the big rock ruined life on Earth for about a good chunk of time. Now, Mokele Mbembe sightings started around the height of Dinomania, when a lot of fossils were found in North America around the early 1900s, and in specifically in the Congo jungle located in Africa. Now something to note, I'm not a historian, and I'm assuming you're not either, but something we both know probably is that the European adventurers during these times were kind of really racist. In particular, Africa was seen as this backwards continent that hardly changed during the time of the dinosaurs, which really ignores the area. Uh, and the geology of the area, but I digress. This trope called Darkest Africa sees African jungle as this deep, primal, dangerous expanse where hostile natives and prehistoric animals live, and it's still around today. Now, I'm not saying Mokele Mbembe is race itself, but it unfortunately comes from an outdated colonizer mindset. And speaking of outdated, note how every Mokele Mbembe sighting has it in the river. Um, earliest paleontologists thought sauropods couldn't support its own weight and need to live in the water to survive. Luckily for now, we know better and nobody believes that anymore. What's that? Oh god. Due to science aside for now, Maclean Bebe matches that classic sauropod image because it came from the mines that thought that's how dancers lived. We found that a lot of surviving dancer sightings. They never quite match up with how we know those animals did live, because they're made up of people that don't understand paleontology, either due to the fact that people saw them in the 1900s, 
or because they're made by creationists. And speaking of which, creationists really like cryptid on these, and they will drop a lot of anti-science conspiracy theories into it, believing that somehow, if these turn out to be living, it'll like subtly disprove the their evolution. Don't don't tell about the coelacanth, or the horseshoe crab, or the tuatara. Look, my point is, there's a lot of cool relics from the past still out there, just just no sauropods, okay? Top three pterosaurs you might not have heard about. Number three, Lodactylus. So if you know anything about plastic dino toys, you know they aren't super accurate, say the least. But imagine playing taller surprise when you discovered a pterosaur with stereotypical inaccuracy. Having both teeth and a large crest, Lodactylus looks like it came straight from a toy. The name meaning play finger, Lodactylus was odd. Not just because of how it looked, but because of how it died. The old specimen got a yucca leaf caught in its jaw and it probably died from starvation. Number two is Peridostro, meaning southern wind. Peridostro is the only known pterosaur with a bristle in its beak. Uh, it was basically a creaceous flamingo and similar to flamingos, it most likely fed by filter feeding small animals with those, br with those beak, using the brussels to filter out the water. It was also found with gizzard stone in its stomach cavity, which suggests it ate hard body crustaceans mainly. And this is true, it might have shared a color of flamingos too, which also get their color from the food they eat. And number one is Kung Panopterus antipolictus. And for the mythical Kung and Pen of Chinese myth, this pterosaur was described just last year and it's very unique. It had an opposable thumb, which is extremely rare outside of mammals, and it was used to help its arboreal treetop lifestyle, which is very cool. 